And so as prayer ministers, I think uh, frequently we'll, we'll encounter people who have struggled with trauma, and trauma is something that if it's not addressed, it can linger for a very long time and cause lots and lots of trouble. So um, Nigel Mumford has a book titled, After the Trauma, the Battle Begins. And, and I think that title is right on because there's two parts. There's the, there's the trauma itself and then there's the what happens after the trauma. The trauma is not an isolated event. It's not isolated to the event, it, but it continues. That the effects of that trauma can continue. What is trauma? According to psychology today, trauma is the experience of severe psychological distress following any terrible or life-threatening event. Sufferers may develop emotional disturbances such as extreme anxiety, anger, sadness, survivor's guilt, or PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. They may experience ongoing problems with sleep or physical pain, encounter turbulence in their personal and professional relationships, and feel a diminished sense of self-worth due to the overwhelming amount of stress. And the instigating event may overpower the person's coping skills. According to Christian Healing Ministries, trauma is anything that happens to us or something we witness that is unpredictable, out of control, and threatens our sense of safety or the safety of those we love. In addition, trauma is also described as the absence of good things or the presence of bad things in our lives as it relates to the nature of our relationships. When I was a teenager, a friend of mine and I were practicing with a javelin um, over the summer. My coach let me, track coach let me take it home and practice at home. And um, because we were foolish teenagers, my friend ended up having the javelin stuck through his leg and um, all the way through, clear through. So he was impaled by the javelin. And for me, that was a traumatic event. That was like one of these things where like my whole world felt shaky and um, I had this effect that I had never had before where everything turned black except for this little hole that I could see through and I had this roaring going on in my ears. Anyway, um, it, it, was, it was stressful. It was a stressful event for me uh, when he pulled the javelin out of his leg, which went right through here and just missed that artery in the leg and went right between the two muscles. That was, um, that was the Lord protecting him for sure from our stupidity. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, it, it, was, it, was, it was bad looking. So anyway, from that point on, whenever I saw like any serious amount of blood, I'd feel faint and then I'd just pass out. Well, Cindy can attest to this. It was terrible. Um, sometimes she'd even punch me. And I'd still pass out. Um, so, uh, And, and so I think that, and I didn't actually realize that that was the connection until I went down to Christian Healing Ministries for some intensive prayer ministry, and it came out of my soaking time. And the, the Lord walked me through that whole experience, and wonderful things happened. But I, I think that's an example of this trauma that happened when I was 16 years old, and when I'm 40 years old, it still has an effect on me, and when I'm 50 years old, it still has an effect on me. So. Uh, you know, those things, if they're not, not healed, some of those traumatic things will just stick around, the effects of those. How did it get through his leg? All right. So um, <clears throat> when you throw a javelin, you can throw it about maybe 150 feet or so. And, you know, if you're really trying hard, maybe you'll get it 200 feet. So you, have to, you throw it pretty far, and then you have to go walk, pick it up, and throw it again, walk, pick it up. So we decided, actually my friend decided, that, you know, we're wasting a lot of time walking back and forth. Why don't we just throw it towards each other, and we'll pick it up and we'll throw it back. So we'll like have a catch with a javelin without getting into too much detail. So we did that for a while, and then my friend said, hey, let me see if I can catch it. Because when you throw a javelin, it's really cool. They kind of have this vib it vibrates in the air, and it kind of like hovers. So he said, throw it over my head. So I threw it over his head, and he jumped up to catch the javelin. And when he caught it, he caught it just behind the grip, and the momentum of the javelin carried him over, and he f impaled himself on the tail end of the javelin, and it went through about, I don't know, four feet. So, uh, and the javelin's about that big around in the middle. So, uh, yeah, it was a mess, a mess of a uh, thing. Um, and, and, 
<laughs> oh, all right. So moving on. So, um, all right. Okay, no one's going to pass out. Good. So, <laughs> so as an adult, traumatic, uh, the traumatic event that we experience or witness can occur in many forms, including domestic violence, uh, community violence, sexual assault or abuse, physical abuse, neglect, war, or natural disasters. And psychological trauma is defined as damage to the psyche that occurs as a result of a severely distressing event. Trauma happens when we perceive the situation to be life-threatening with no means of escape. We then get stuck in the memory of this event and time does not heal emotional trauma on its own. You know, a lot of times time kind of makes things fade away, but there's some things that don't heal in time. The most common symptoms of trauma fall into three broad areas, re-experiencing the trauma, avoidance, and hyperarousal. And I'll talk about those a little bit. Other emotions such as guilt, anger, and depression can also, can also commonly occur following trauma. So guilt, anger, and depression. So re-experiencing the trauma would be this kind of repetitive, vivid, and intrusive thoughts. Like it just keeps coming around. Like these images, these memories, sensations about what that trauma was and the consequences of it. Uh, the avoidance is not wanting to be around reminders of the trauma, just kind of trying to put it behind us, you know, not deal with it. And hyperarousal is this difficulty falling asleep or being irritable with outbursts of anger. Um, difficulty concentrating or being unable to unwind, pan panic attacks, racing hearts, that kind of stuff. So it's this heightened sense of awareness. After the traumatic event, if the symptoms during the first month impair social or, social or occupational functioning, it's considered acute stress disorder. And if these patterns last beyond one month, the, the syndrome is called post-traumatic stress disorder. And maybe some of us are familiar with that term. Estimates of how many people develop PTSD vary widely from as little as 3% to as much as 75%, according to the Academy of Cognitive Therapy. Approximately half of those who have PS PTSD will recover within three months. Recover means it doesn't affect their lives, make it hard for them to function. Although the person may be able to function without impairment, they may not be healed from the effects of the trauma. So, you know, PTSD can be debilitating as far as functioning in life. Um, half those people, half those people after three months can get to the point where they can function. Often trauma experienced early in life leaves wounds that last into adulthood. Traumatic events may be physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, neglect, loss of a loved one, bullying, witnessing violence, or having a serious accident or injury. Trauma can also result from growing up in a highly dysfunctional home where emotional neglect and indifference are the norm. Over time, the abuse creates layer after layer of shaming and dysfunctional behavior, leaving the person feeling progressively worse about themselves. Approximately five million children in the United States alone experience some form of trauma every year. More than two million of these children are physically or sexually abused each year. <clears throat> People who have suffered from early life trauma or abuse often struggle with upsetting emotions, frightening memories, or just feeling numb, disconnected, or unable to trust other people. Their lives become organized around the traumatic event, the person who hurt them or, the num or numbing their pain. Unfortunately, too many suffer alone because they fear judgment from others or feeling they are not worth the trouble. Their lives are marred by emotional pain, confusion, and self-doubt. And as I was reading through the information on trauma, uh, my mind went to my son Scott's struggles. And after his death earlier this year, we found out that he had been sexually abused as a child. And in retrospect, I can see his struggles with drugs and alcohol were an attempt to numb the pain of a hurt that were so deep, that was so deep, that he couldn't tell us about it. And unfortunately, these attempts to self-medicate for him turned into addictions and lifelong struggles.
So we all experience trauma in some fashion, some more severely than others. According to Dr. Wilder, Wilder who is co-author of The Life Model, trauma is anything that renders us less than what God has designed us to be. It can come from injuries inflicted on us, or it can result from doing things that are not of God's design, which would be sin, or even a bent in our family line, something that would come down through the generations. Dr. Wilder divides trauma into two categories. Trauma A, and for me it's easy to think A, absence, the absence of good things that a child should have as he or she grows up, which would be things like food, shelter, security, belonging, healthy attachment, and unconditional love. And trauma B is the bad things, although maybe that's not a very descriptive word, but bad things that happen to children and adults, such as physical, sexual, and verbal abuse, abandonment, loss that causes physical wounds, betrayal, calamity, or victimization. Traumatic experiences often arouse strong, disturbing feelings that may or may not abate on their own. In the immediate aftermath of a traumatic event, it's common to experience shock or denial. A person may undergo a range of emotional reactions such as fear, anger, guilt, and shame. Feelings of helplessness and vulnerability are also common. Some may experience flashbacks and other signs of PTSD. Traumatic memories fade naturally with time, but persistence of sy sy symptoms is a signal that some professional help is needed, or maybe some prayer help. Addiction and mental illness as it relates to trauma. Behavioral medicine and addiction doctors have long noted the link between emotional trauma, addic addictive disease, and mental illness. A 2012 study published in Alcoholism, Clinical and Experimental Research, showed that childhood trauma is common among people undergoing addiction treatment, especially women, and is strongly predictive of depression and mood disorders, anxiety, eating disorders, and obesity, compuls compulsive sexual behavior, and other forms of addictive disease. Trauma also damages the brain. The fact that, trauma, like, that traumatic life experiences often precede mental illness and substance abuse is not surprising. What is surprising is the extent of changes that occur in the brains of traumatized children and teens. Using sophisticated brain imaging technology, researchers at the University of Texas were able to measure preclinical deficits in the neuronal signaling and connectivity in the midbrain region of adolescents who were tra traumatized as children. This neurocircuitry is the hardwiring that regulates how we process emotions and cope with stress. In addition, researchers found that early life trauma diminishes, diminishes one's capability to experience enthusiasm, pleasure, or contentment. This insight is important because it suggests a neural pathway through which early life stress may contribute to depression. This is all uh, written by Dr. John Crystal, editor of Biological Psychiatry. The findings suggest that childhood maltreatment is a severe stressor that alters trajectories of brain development. This is critically important because young children do not have a frame of reference to, in which to process and categorize, tra categorize traumatic experiences. They require the love and the help of a competent, caring adult as the primary source of comfort and support. If a parent is absent or the source of abuse, the child may truly suffer deeply and in isolation. As traumatized children mature, their psycho, psycho I don't know, I can't pronounce that word, psycho, psychopathology, got it, psychopathology emerges. As teenagers, they learn that drugs or alcohol quickly numb feelings of fear, powerlessness, and depression, and drown out painful memories. As a result, the deep wounds of abuse or, traumatic, or trauma become inexorably yoked to addiction. So trauma and addiction have a strong linkage. And as addiction progresses, resentments emerge and become fuel that feeds the self-loathing addiction and later the thoughts of suicide that can follow. 
Children who are traumatized often carry their wounds, fear, and helplessness into adulthood. They survive, to survive, they learn how to push away or medicate their pain and self-loathing. But in the process, and this is important, they also lose their spiritual identity. For others, the pain and fear can turn inward and be expressed as depression, overwhelming anxiety, cutting or self-mutilation. Some teens engage in so-called self-soothing behaviors such as sexual promiscuity and overeating. Eventually, most become mired in the addictive cycle of self-hatred and shame, ameliorated by intoxicants or other compensatory, compensatory behavior, all of which lead to more self-hatred, shame, and the cycle continues. For those who have been abused, words are cheap and trust is in short supply, partially because the self-loathing is deeper than most of us can imagine. Abuse from your mom or dad or older siblings or a trusted adult makes it very difficult for the person to feel worthy of love, respect, or care. Trauma is one of the ways that demonic oppression can start in a person's life. And when I first learned about this, I was shocked at the unfairness of it all. Not only does the person experience the trauma, but it can open a door the enemy can use to further damage the injured person because the enemy does want to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan uses these words to foster self-hatred and resentment, and he wants those who've been hurt the most to feel like they somehow deserve it. He whispers, no one loves you. And sadly, many victims of abuse believe the lie, so much so that some take their own lives. Dr. Bessel van Kolk, a well-known traumatologist, writes in his book, The Body Keeps the Score, that developmental trauma, which is trauma that occurs during a child's development years up to the age of 18, is a hidden epidemic in the United States and a pandemic throughout the world. It affects, its effects are fivefold. It blocks growth and slows maturity, both spiritually and emotionally. It affects relationships, creating difficulties in attaching to others. There is, loss, <clears throat> there is loss of personal identity. It causes the inability to regulate emotions. And both learning and attention are affected these problems of, these types of problems which begin in childhood can be exacerbated as adults unless it is, unless there is appropriate and skilled intervention and healing. Trauma left unhealed has devastating effects that accumulate over a lifetime. This all seems very bleak, but there is good news. Jesus can and does heal the effects of trauma. He does remove the pain and the shame and he does restore life. Amen. Thank you for the